Hi, everybody. So, you know, on this channel, we're here to have some fun. And I have already posted one video of belly dancing, just a very basic, you know, what to do with your hands and how to get started with slow work in your hips. And I've actually had a few requests to go ahead and talk about music and to talk about how to play the ukulele. Um, for one, I have two ukulele students currently that come to me in person, and that is definitely doable if you're in my area here in Texas. You know, you can hit me up at L-O-K-E-S, L-O-O-K-S, locates, looks, at gmail.com. That's um, my email I've had like forever. So, and that was when I had my music and dance studio. Right now, we are going to go take a look at this ukulele and see what we can do. And just for a little mini lesson. Okay. So, what we're going to do right now, here's the ukulele. You know, ukulele, as they say in Hawaii. So, when you play ukulele, you do not put this part over your leg. What you actually do is take the roundest part and rest that on your leg. It's resting on my right leg. My right hand is actually, the forearm is actually squeezing it towards my body so it doesn't fall off my lap. And my left hand is doing what I need to do up here. Okay? Kind of pretend you're a tree branch and boop, you're kind of holding it that way. You're the branch and it's resting in there. That makes sense. You always count fingers this way, one, two, three, and four. Do not count your thumb. So it's one, two, three, and four. If you count your thumb, it's not going to do you any good because your thumb is behind the neck, correct? Yes. And that's how you're going to hold it. Your fingers will always be round when you press on any string. If your fingers are flat, you're going to deaden some of the other strings, and that's not the effect we want right now. For tuning, you have strings. Listen carefully. The top string is four. Then you go down three and then string two and then string one. So counting back, it's like counting backwards, right? Four, three, two, one. One is on the bottom. Tuning the notes you're tuning it to, that's when you tune these, uh, turn these little knobs, it's G, C, E, A. G, C, E, A. Best thing to do when you have a ukulele is go ahead and it's called a snark tuner. And so it snaps on. That's just a brand name of it. There's other ones, so I'm not necessarily only endorsing them. There are other ones, but they clip on. You turn the thing on, and it lights up in green when you hit G. It'll it'll show you. And the little meter, it's like a meter, electric meter. It'll go back and forth. And when it's the correct tuning, it will be straight up and down. Or you might have one that just turns green. Red when it's not in tune, green when it is. And that's how you know. So, and if you need to write this stuff down, stop the video, write down tuning, G, C, E, A. Yeah, write down whatever I'm telling you that you need to know. All right, next thing. This is just the basic basics, right? The lines here that you see, those little bars that you see, actually have a name and they're called frets. And we count from here. Don't count this plastic. This is where this is just being held together. You know, this white thing. That's where everything is getting stuck together. Actually, count where that very first one. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, and so on down the line. Remember I told you about your counting your fingers? One, two, three. This third finger. I'll go put my tree branch back, boink, okay? My third finger is going behind that third fret, that's that little line across, on the very first string. Where's the first string? On the bottom, 
right? So here's one, look at where I'm at. Here's two, look at where I'm at. Here's three. Third fret, very first string, that's the string that's on the bottom, closest to the floor. And I'm holding it not real tight like this. I'm not trying to grasp it. My arm, my shoulder should be down. Your arm can be a little away from your body and your fingers very round. To make them very round, helps kind of position this thumb in a way that you can press down. So your th don't bring your thumb over this way, by the way, because if your thumb is over here, you're gonna deaden something, because I'm not gonna hear it. You're muting it or deadening it. So go ahead, it's like if you're squeezing. So look, here's my finger behind the third fret on the very first string, okay? My thumb, which is hard to do this because I gotta turn around, is behind the neck. So it's like if I'm pressing or squeezing them together. That's, you need pressure here. If there's no pressure here on top, you're not gonna get a set, okay? And right behind that little fret, don't put it on top of the fret because you're gonna get think, 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 right? If it's behind, get a note, you get a sound. So that's all we're gonna do is just that. See where I'm at? Rest of fingers just kind of hang around. Take this hand and you're just strumming down. And I use my thumb when we start. You don't need a pick. Please don't try doing that. I know little kids like to have a pick. It falls on the center and you're never gonna find it. It's gonna float around there forever. So just the side of your thumb, not this way turned in, the side of your thumb. And we're just gonna strum down. One, finger is still one two three four it's actually a c chord so when you're playing a song you need that to see now see where my third finger is right now all i'm going to do is move it over one string only one string so the second string is still behind that third line right right there but now I got these two fingers sticking up in the air, my first and second finger. So listen, because it's so confusing at first. Your second finger, which is your middle finger, goes behind the second fret on the very first string. And then your first finger, the one waving here, is going to go on my third string behind that second fret. So if you were to look at it, it looks like this. It's like a triangle. Okay. Now you got to get these fingers round because if they're not round, you're not going to get a good sound. You're always on your fingertips. Your fingers have, I'm trying to get this little finger out of the way so you can see. They always have to be round like kitty cat claws. Like that, okay? And do the same thing. We're strumming down. One, two, three, four, and one, two. Three, four, one more time. One, two, three, four. Now watch what I'm going to do. Don't let go yet. Raise up the first and second finger. Take your third finger, pull it back to that very first string, right behind there. Back to the C chord. One, two, three. Sad. Third finger hops over one string. Middle finger goes on the edge or on that first string. First finger on the third string. triangle. That's called a G chord. Strum down. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three. One more time like that. One, two, three, four, and release first two fingers. Third finger, hop back. First string. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and stop. Okay. 
You have two cords. You have a C cord, which is just your third finger hanging around. And then you have the G cord, which is a triangle with the point on the bottom. I'm trying to get a good way for you to see it. Hopefully you can see it better, yes? Okay. Now there's such a thing as an ukulele chord chart. So say you go to the music store and you buy your first ukulele. Yay! All right, now you want to have a chord chart. Some of them come with a little kit, you know, the little bag you put it in, and then there's a little chord chart. The chord chart shows you where you're going to place your hands on the frets and on the strings. Do not do any kind of tabs where it says zero, two, one, three, because that's not really going to tell you anything. But hey, just stick your fingers here, but you have no idea why. Just do what I tell you, and when I, we don't want that, right? So go ahead and look, there is a beautiful chord chart that's put out, there's a ukulele picture and flowers and it's laminated and that's really a cool one. It has every chord imaginable. Are you going to use every chord imaginable? No, no. Okay? You probably won't use every chord imaginable anyway. But here's your G chord and your C chord. Now why do I start with those two? I start with those two because you can do a song right away with those two. Okay? It's a basic song. Nothing fancy. We're not going to be, oh, look, I'm playing Mozart's whatever. No, you're just going to do a very basic song, okay? So here is your third finger behind that fret, and we're strumming just down, 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 okay? All the way down. Don't miss the string because there was one that pulls down. One, two, three, four. Now I'll sing the song while we're strumming. Here we go. Two. Three, four, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the ah, change to the G chord, the triangle. Stopping on purpose. Lift the two fingers up, pull this one back, back to C. Whole world in his hands, he's got the. Guess what? G chord again. Set their finger over, edge, and here. Well, third string, third string, second fret. Whole world in his. And back to your C chord, third finger, third fret on the first string. Hands, two, three, four, and one. So now you have at least one song you can do, just using two chords. One of the other songs that I teach a lot, and <clears throat> then I teach it because you only have C and G chord. Let's try it, right? Here's C, remember? Okay, one, two, three, four. Flies in the buttermilk shoe, fly shoe. Now we're going to go to the B chord. Flies in the buttermilk shoe, fly shoe. And then back to the C chord. Flies in the buttermilk. Shoe, fly, shoe, and now go to the G chord. Skip to my new mind. Back to the C chord. Darling. Lulu. Skip to my new. Move the third finger over, put the other two fingers down. Loo, loo, skip to my loo, back to the C chord. Loo, loo, skip to my loo, then where do we go? G chord again. Skip to my loo, my, and back to the C chord. Darling. Let's make it sound complete. Now, 
That's an old, 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 old song. Like way back when the song. Is it politically correct? I have no idea right now. We only want to learn these two chords. That's all. For now. Okay, because this is a little mini snippet. All right. Now, when you get better and you learn more chords and you're going down like that, I'm going to show you what your other strumming is going to be. All right. So what you're going to do, I'm going to kind of sit up here. Here's my C. I'm not going to go anywhere. It's just my C chords. I don't want to do anything fancy. You're going to still use your thumb and you're going to go down, down, up, up. Down, up. Can you use your first finger and do it this way? Yeah. Uh, me, I don't like that. It's recommended. You know, the Hawaiians play that way. However, I use my thumb and it works just fine for me. There's another little trick, which I'll show you later on down the line. But for now, you should thumb. It won't fall off and you won't find anything in the hole. So you don't need a pick. Don't be looking for one. The kids love that, but don't. Third finger behind the third fret on the very first string, okay? Now, here we go. Listen, because it's called a little syncopated rhythm. Down, down, up, up, down, up. Down, down, up, up, down, up. Now, I'm making that sound very robotic on purpose. Just so that you learn the direction of where we're going. First, we're going down twice. Down, down, now we're gonna go up, 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 down, up. That's broken down a lot. So down, down, up, up, down, up. And again, when you're using your thumb, it's the side of your thumb. Don't try turning your, your wrist around and trying to strum this way, because I've seen people try to do that. And it's like, oh, it doesn't work. Side of your thumb, right? Down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. Now, for now, because we're learning that, you remember your G chord? Your finger moves over one string. Second finger, middle finger goes on the edge of the very first string. My pointer finger is on my third string. Down, down, up, up, down, up, down, 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 up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, and then back. Stop to do it. C chord. Down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down. When you're doing this with the side of your thumb, it's just down, down, up up down up the movement comes from your wrist your, your whole arm shouldn't be going you know like a lever it's your wrist like if you're kind of just shaking your wrist okay very loose don't make your tight because if your hand's tight you can't do it so that's the first two chords c and g i've given you two strumming patterns now for those of you who have never played this and it's brand new to you don't try to go down, down, up, up, down, up, right away. Don't do it. You're going to want to take this and throw it out the window. So what you're going to do when you're very, very first learning, you're just strumming down. Three, four, always count. One, two, three, four. Okay. When you're doing down, down, up, up, down, up, you're not counting one, two, three, four like that. Although it will fit with songs that are in what we call 4-4 four, four time, a 4-4 four, four time signature. Those are the numbers at the beginning of a song. You'll see them on music. You'll see these two little numbers. One on, They look like a fraction, one on top of the other. And you're like, what is that? So the top number tells you how many beats you have to have in each little rectangle box. A little measure in your music. Those little square boxes, rectangle boxes are. That's a measure. You have four beats in there. So you do. One, two, three, four. That's your four beats. The bottom number, the other little four, tells you what kind of note gets just one beat. And that happens to be called a quarter note. 
Now that's the theory behind everything. Some of you might not need to know that right now, nor do you care. But that's technically what it's for and why it's why you're strumming down. That's why you're going one, two, three, four, and then when you get a new chord, you still go one, two, three, four. Okay. Back to my C chord, by the way. Um, when you're doing down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. Why does that fit with 4-4? Four, four? Because you're not going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You're not, the rhythm is different. You've got that up, up. It's quicker in the middle, if you notice. And I'll leave it at that. I don't want to get too technical because when you get too technical, I find that most people just go off and they just turn it off because it's too much, especially at the beginning. At the beginning, you just want to have fun. Ukulele is a fun instrument. It's one that you can play and sing with and sing songs like Happy Birthday. Um, you can sing Pearly Shells, Tiny Bubbles, which we will do at another point in time. You know, things as easy as we just did, he's got the whole world in his hands. It's a nice instrument because I'll tell you why. It's got a narrow enough neck that kids whose hands are not fully grown yet can get their hand around the neck. If you buy a small kid a guitar or if they have a small hand and that neck is wider, they can't get around the guitar and they're struggling and then they don't want to play. So that's one thing. Another thing, ukulele is known to be fun. It's a sing-along type thing. So when you're going like this and you're just sitting around with people and youth ministry is a good place to use it. I've done it. It works really well. My classroom setting is great. I'm not lugging around a big instrument. I get my music going. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the I just changed between those two chords and I kept going down, down, up, up, down, up. Okay. Only two chords, got a song. Skip to my loop, same thing. Um, I happen to teach pre K four and I've used it with that. I've taught ukulele as you know, all as the third grade, and I've taught adults. It's just a lot of fun, it's just a fun instrument, guys. So when you're doing this, just have fun with it. You don't want, that's why I don't want to get too technical right now. Can I, can't, will I, should I? Not yet. And probably not on here. If you're doing um, an in-house lesson with me, then yes, I can. If you want to set up a Zoom link and go, hey, I'll set up a Zoom link. And hey, I'll even pay you to teach me. I'll do it on Zoom with you. Okay. We can talk about that if you're really interested in it. I do that with a voice lesson. I do it from California to Texas. It works really well. So it can be done. But right here on Saunders Studio One, we're just going to give a little snippet here and there. Now we've already got a belly dancing on here. Now we've got to put the ukulele on there. Next, what I'll do is I'll pick another thing to put on here. You'll get to kind of pick and choose different things to see, different things you may be interested in for yourself to do. And then as you go along and say, oh, look, and now there's another belly dancing one. So I've got one and two, and now I can learn more. And I have ukulele. Now here's the first one she did. Here's the second one she did. So, you know, we'll do it that way. There'll be a hula one on here, a Tahitian one on here, you know, for exercising for fun, right? Let's have some fun with this. Not get too panicky. The tuning, if you buy a ukulele and you want to just kind of play around it, please don't get a $300 ukulele because you don't even know if you're going to continue. They go as low as $40. Some of the $40, I, like, I would not buy Rogue, R-O-G-U-E, for the simple reason as I did. And it's snapped in half right here, where you know what this is. Because 
it was the way it was put together and was not supported in the inside. So this one here happens to be Lanakai, and I do like Lanakai. It has a nice sound. Um, Cordova is another one. I'm just giving you names. I think of Makala, Kala, um, which is a graphite one. I believe it's graphite. It's, it's like um, the, the surfboard type material. And that's another good one. They run about $40 and up. Just don't get the cheapest, cheapest one you can find. Like, you know, those little ones that the knobs are like, like it's a coconut. Oh, look, it looks like a coconut. It is these little things. It won't stay in tune. Forget it. So you want to get something that's decent that's going to last you. I always send my people to an actual music store. And you can walk in there and tell them, look, I don't want the cheapest end. Do not sell me high end. Give me something that kind of give them your price range. Like if you want 60 80 dollars $80 is pretty decent ones you can get for that price. You don't need you're not look, you're not going to Carnegie Hall. Don't worry about the expense. There's electric ones too, but you're not going to Carnegie Hall. All right, so just get a nice simple one. This is just a very basic ukulele. It's you know, that's all it is. Go in there, hey, I just want a basic ukulele. What you got? And take a look at them. There's some really pretty ones that have mother of um, pearl inlay in the circle. This one happened to have this decoration. And I like the eagle. And I also like the fact in the back, it's like a retro one, right? There's the little girl. So that's why I got it. I got it because I like that. I thought it was interesting. It's got a nice sound. Got it in Aloha Festival in California. So, you know, there's different ways to get those. But I'm not going to spend a ton of money. Now, for me, I have more than one ukulele, right? This one was $125. I'm just giving you price ranges in case you're interested in looking around for stuff. And, you know, for a family member, for a birthday present, Christmas present, it does make a nice gift, by the way. And it's small enough for all people to carry. It's not heavy, very light. So, we remember C chord, going back to that. And our... G chord and remember you're going to stop in between and for my students so I'm going to have a look at this when you are doing down down up up down up down down up, hang on to that one chord the easiest chord which is C to get the hang of this when you go to G you may end up stopping yourself and going okay wait G chord, even though I know it. Just stop. And then down, down, up, up, down, up. And why do I do that? Because it gives you time to think. You're making that transition. Eventually, you don't want to stop. You want to be able to do your C chord. And then go to G chord without stopping in between. Okay. So do be patient with yourself. When you get a tuner, make sure it's the one that clips on. Get something simple. Tuning C, G, E, A. They have tuners on your phone. But sometimes it's a little bit harder to use than the one that's tipping because you have to go by just the sound. And it doesn't necessarily tell you when you've achieved the right note. Okay? So that's why I like to clip on ones. I have about three of them. Make sure your battery doesn't wear out. Guess what happened? My battery. Go ahead and make sure though that you can get it. Those run about maybe twenty dollars. So all in all, you can get something decent. The core chart I would just buy because it's there, and you'll be able to look at C and G. Because I'm not able to like hand you one through the computer, right, or through the internet. So guys, thank you. Saunders Studio One. Ukulele. We'll do a little bit more later on down the line, but I'm just going to kind of give everybody a sampling of everything. And do come back and see me again. Do definitely tell others about this. If you really are interested in lessons from me in-house, then like what I always say is you're going to have to contact me. And it's through low case. Look, someone who used my old email. A lot of people know it. L-O-K-E-S. L-O-O-K-S at gmail.com. 
And Lokes is how you say it, lokeslooks at gmail.com. It's been with me forever. If you know me from back in Cali, you'll know that email. You're like, oh, that's that lady that was in the pink building. I was in that pink building. I painted the building pink. And it was the only pink building in the middle of town. And that's why I did that. So, but I'm not teaching in my pink building anymore, guys. So, and I'm not painting my house pink. HOA, don't worry about it. All right. <laughs> Let me know. All right. So I'm so glad you got a chance to at least look at the ukulele and get a rough idea of how to do this. If C and G, if you got a good start on it, practice it. Just be patient with yourself. You can do this. Like I said, if you want to get me, locaselooks at gmail.com. And I'll see you again in the next video. And we'll see then. What I'm going to do, is it going to be voice? Is it going to be hula? Is it going to be Tahitian? Is it even going to be Zumba? I don't know. But we'll find out, and it'll be fun. All right, guys. I'll see you soon. Aloha nui loa. Mahalo nui loa. Love you much, and thank you much. That's what that means. All right, you guys. Everybody take care, and I'll see you the next time around. Bye for now.